How we looking? Looking good. Looking excellent. For a Friday? Are you kidding me? Friday? SketchUp Live? SketchUp and Layout? Oh my oh gosh, my I'm gosh, so ready. So ready. SketchUp so Live. Sometimes it just doesn't get any better. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you peak and you, and you just look at your life and you realize it's all downhill from here. <laughs> So well, welcome to the top of the hill, everybody. Uh, yeah. It's a nice view <laughs> from up here. That's right. Beautiful. We'll see how quickly we can uh, start <laughs> tumbling down. <laughs> so what's in store for today? You know... Um, we hadn't done anything on layout in a while and i um uh, we just released a new course on using layout and i thought what an excellent chance to fumble my way through trying to replicate some of the stuff that we do in that course as a way to introduce layout so I'll, I'll go a little more into into where we're going to go and the, the things we're going to build out. But that's the idea today is we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in SketchUp, some, but we're going to spend a fair amount of time trying to build out a basic kind of doc uh, documentation package in layout. That's awesome. Yeah, and the course you're referring to is the uh, SketchUp Campus, learn.sketchup.com course. Um, that is on uh, it's in, the link is in the description and Tyson's showing it here as well That's right learn.sketchup.com is what we call SketchUp campus um, uh, If you want to ask why it's not campus.sketchup.com or something else. There's a long boring Not maybe not great reason, but it's SketchUp campus at learn.sketchup.com and we uh, we actually have had campus for a few years now, but we recently moved it to a new site. Uh, there were there were a few stability issues and, and things that were limiting us pre uh, previously. But we have I, I'm actually like I'm really I'm really pretty proud of campus. Um, I've put some of the stuff on there, but we have some excellent courses from our our colleague Eric. Um, is, uh, he's a fantastic illustrator. He comes from landscape architecture. So if you want to learn about the layout essentials or some graphic or illustration techniques, rendering techniques via Photoshop, via V-Ray, we've got classes on that. If you work a lot with CAD files and you like have some issues with the interoperability or, or working with them, we've got this awesome CAD uh, to 3D workflow. But the one that we're going to focus on today is this one, which we just released within the last week or two, and it is using layout to create this design package. So if I butcher this example today, which is highly <laughs> likely, be assured that uh, you can come over here and actually learn from Eric <laughs> the way it's uh, the way you should and so uh, I, I believe in you Tyson I think you can do it <laughs> thank you Aaron <laughs> um, you, you take that to, that as being whatever you really feel like it should be so yeah <laughs> all right <clears throat> I, so, did, I did just want to, to to call out real quick one of the what it just it just happened to coincide this way that this week we had our uh, our weekly session of SketchUp 3D Base Camp Fireside Chat. We had Camilla Lopez on, and she just happened to be talking about layout. Um, I'm gonna let everybody know, Tyson did not know about that when he said, hey, maybe I'll do layout on the live stream. So this just happens to be a layout full week. Um, hopefully you guys caught that. If you did not catch Camilla's presentation, it is available on YouTube uh, or our Crowdcast page. But uh, check that out, not now. Check it out after Tyson's done. <laughs> like that's like like desserts. Tyson's gonna give, give you a big big meaty layout meal right now, and then you can go uh, top it off with uh, some some lighthearted antics and Camilo Lopez's uh, interior design layout work. Yeah, I I, I I haven't seen that either. So I'm also gonna go grab that 
that dessert after this. And be like, here's somebody who actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had an incredible presentation. And, uh, you know, when you go to the YouTube link, you can skip to that part or you can watch in the beginning and get all the fun and games, literally uh, games for yeah. the fireside uh, chat. So that's um, it's a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, her, her actual uh, education chunk is mind-blowing and yeah. enlightening and awesome so nice. and uh keggy kegification did uh say it was good so, so you have validation beyond our totally biased uh opinions as the people who put, put it on um also just to throw out kunal said that uh he only hires architectural interns who are well versed in sketchup and layout so oh hey camille is here oh oh no, oh, no. <laughs> Back again, hey. Okay, so A, we didn't know you were there when we were talking about how good your presentation is. B, <laughs> now the pressure's really on Tyson. I did not need that. <laughs> I mean, it's a different Camilo Lopez who's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> convincing? Oh, out. sure. <laughs> okay, okay, well, um, any other announcements? Um for this Probably, week or, I'm gonna or, I'm gonna wait till you start and then throw some more stuff out. That's, okay. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean coming up. Well, we'll we'll hit this at the end too. But yeah, coming up next week we do have another episode of the Fireside Chat. We're gonna bring on artist and uh, what, what's some, uh, urban architectural planner. illustrator, architectural illustrator and urban planner JJ Zanetta is gonna come on and she's gonna show us how we do. He just does some awesome stuff. So. Uh, come hang out with us Wednesday on Crowdcast to see that. And uh, we're going to be back with a special treat this Friday. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. See you on Friday. But right now, let's, yeah, let's talk layout. All right, all right, all right. So I, I, as we mentioned, what with the bulk of this time is, is jump in and, like I say, do my best approximation of Eric's excellent work. Uh, do go check out campus. Do go check out his layout course for a, a better overview. But, uh, but just in case there's anybody out there who just has never even cracked layout at all, I thought I would do. We'll we'll start with a brief introduction to kind of what layout is, what it's meant to be, and then we'll we'll actually dive into the sort of the real um, more uh, architectural example. But with that in mind, so I just drawn this random object that kind of has a, a few distinct sides to it. And I'm setting up a few scenes to begin. Now this is kind of key to using layout. Um, early on, you could use layout without setting up scenes, but in fact, if you do, you're just gonna run into trouble. So. Uh, one of the things that I want to kind of just explore on a, a overall theoretical level, jump in, Aaron or anybody who wants to, but um, SketchUp is kind of freeform design, and you you get to to play around and, and and sort of mold as you go. But I think, in my opinion, when you're ready to move to layout, you should have a little more of a structure of a plan of where you want to go. And the more you have that in your mind and you prep for it the better your experience in layout's gonna be. It's not as just free form, do what you want. You need to have a, have a plan. And so in this case, um, I've got a few scenes set up. I'm gonna set up, let's say, one more, turn perspective off, create a scene here. And we'll just call this one the front view. Okay, so a few quick scenes. And then I'm going to save this model and send it to layout, which we can do through the file menu or just an icon here. And this is our SketchUp model in layout. So the nice thing that we can do here is create multiple views. Now, let me go ahead and just create a random one and uh, we may run into some trouble with this, but that's that's okay. I, <laughs> I kind of hope we will. I want to emphasize the point that you really should do some prep work in SketchUp because you can mess things up here, but we'll see. 
We'll see what happens. I, One of it, those it, uh, ounce of planning is better than a pound of prevention, or I don't know. Something. It's, there, it's metric. I don't really understand how that works, but um, <laughs> yeah, planning ahead is good, is what that, what that saying that I don't remember means. If we look here at our SketchUp model, I've got this one selected. I can choose between these different scenes that we've already set up. And uh, well, well we're, see, we're having fun already. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So here's our front view. I'm going to resize our viewport. And uh, we'll, we'll get into scale a little bit later. Um, at this point, uh, we'll just have a front and a top view. So I don't want to belabor this example too long. So this one. I will choose the top. And layout, um, think of it in, in some ways kind of like, oh, what's the program? Um, Illustrator, but also uh, what's Adobe's page layout? InDesign. InDesign, thank you, Matt. <clears throat> or Affinity Publisher. Some of these where you're actually um, embedding and linking to references, be it text, be it images, and in our case, an actual SketchUp model. So I could select these, I could do certain things like, let's just say, add a, a border around them, um, you know, kind of graphical elements. But the, the thing about the layout that make, makes it such a powerful connection to SketchUp is that uh, once I start to set this up, I go back to my SketchUp model, I come into the model, I start making some changes. So I come over and I just cut this wall away and just say extend this out. And punch some holes here. Just something so we can see. All right, we've made something. some changes. Something. Something in every axis. <laughs> uh, so I've saved the model. Now when I jump back to our layout view, I'm just going to right click on any one of these viewports and say update the model reference. And if everybody could see it, all the all of the uh, views changed to reflect the new new changes that we made. If you blink, you miss it. <laughs> so quick. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> well, that's, and like, like you said, that that's one of the one of the key pieces of layout, right? That's why it, it, it's better than. I know we still hear people are all over the place with the workflows, and that's cool. Everybody does stuff a little bit different. We do have people who are out there who are, you know, export two D drawings, and they do hop over to Layout or Inkscape or some other CAD pro program. Um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is one of the strengths, obviously, is you don't have to be fully completed with everything you're doing in SketchUp in order to start your output. Definitely. So, it, <clears throat> like I said, and, and actually, I, I, we still see that, right? Like, uh, and again, if that's your preference, people will export a lot of images, but then they've got, they've got to go through and, and do it again. Um, now that said, I think it's fair to say that, um, you know, if you're going to set something up in layout, it's likely that you, you, you do have some decisions made in SketchUp, um, but it is nice that it connects. There's, a, there's other connections here we'll explore that are nice. So that's a quick intro to layout and SketchUp, why they're so um, integrally connected is because they have this direct model. Uh, direct link to the model. If this view doesn't work for me, I can create a different one uh, on the fly. 
And I can take this and say uh, preserve scale on resize. Because if I took this and scale it, it's going to shrink the model in the viewport. But in this case, I will say preserve scale on resize. And now that viewport kind of view is locked. And I can easily start creating multiple views. And just like and if you're not if you're not familiar with layout at all, yeah, the inferencing is similar to SketchUp too, where you just inference to that other uh, corner of that uh, viewport too. So if you're familiar with that and like arrays and stuff, a lot of stuff works similarly. So if you are used to that, you know, that way of working, then it it's pretty seamless. Mm -hmm. Good point, Matt. Uh, so it, there's a lot of your stuff that your your understanding of SketchUp that should come over pretty well. Um, so let's let's jump into this other example, um, that sort of intro. Now to do this in the campus course, one of the things that we try to do with every campus. Uh, course that we create is create example files so that you can actually practice what we're what we're talking about and in this case Eric's created a really great um, set uh, exercise set so let's see what do I got here this is the zip file this is it unzipped I've got his layout um, this is what we're gonna work towards creating I doubt we'll get this entire thing built up but if we look, he's got the PDF of the, the final kind of doc. And in this case, he was thinking of it more as like, rather than a, a, a really high-end construction package, um, this was kind of a proposal, a design proposal to convert an existing uh, garage into kind of a living space and so it's more of a proposal to go out and get bids. So it has some detail. If we look through this, it's got the existing conditions of what it is, the existing um, exterior elevations, and then his proposal for a few things to change on it. And all of this documentation is created from one SketchUp file. And again, that's the that's the lovely thing about SketchUp and layout is that we can do a couple things in SketchUp that's going to make it easier for us to set this up, all these different things in layout. So this is what we're going to try and create. Let's look at the model. So um, <clears throat> let's examine the model for a moment just to see. So he's got sort of this existing site. Uh, this is the block over here is, this, is the house. And then he's got a number of scenes already set up and a number of tags already set up. So if we look through a few of these, these scenes are set up kind of as the views. Now, again, the, the idea being you have this idea uh, of like converting this space or documenting some, um, some construction you want to do. And so you just sort of work through your mind and say, what are the usual pieces that we're going to need? We, you know, typically you, you have some perspective views, typically you're going to have some sections and elevations and plans. The, the usual things that you uh, can anticipate. So in this case, he's got you know, a front view and a view from above of kind of the entire site. He's got a plan view where he's turned perspective off and he's looking straight down. And he's got some perspective views. 
Now, one thing I think it's po worth pointing out in this case, you can, and actually you probably usually will, in your scenes, when you have a scene like this, he's got all these tags uh, broken out, and here's a car <laughs> left over from the kind of existing garage view sitting halfway through this wall and in, in the living room of the new proposed space. But he also has this broken off into a different tag. So we can turn that off. Uh, we can turn the existing furniture off. So there's a couple things in here that you may save. Uh, and like I say, you probably will. When you set up your tags, you'll save um, this view with the correct tags turned on and off and you'll save that, that tag structure. But if you don't, it's okay because we still have access to this information and, and the ability to turn stuff on and off in layout. So we're going to be okay. But it's, that's, it's that's, worth pointing uh, out. Yeah, not to, not to belabor the point, but it is a big, probably the biggest change that's happened to layout. Um, what is that, about a year back that the a lot of controls got added to layout where you can edit things after the fact. And that's uh, really changed how you work with layout. Because before, you had to be really careful. Every scene had to be perfectly manicured before you went to layout. And that's not so not so much true anymore. Mm -hmm. Which is really nice for those of us who, like all that pre-planning <laughs> and preparation. I mean, it hurts your brain. <clears throat> it does. And it, it, you could go back to your SketchUp model and, and you know, fix a scene and, and readjust it, save it, and then send it back. But you would have to do that, as Aaron's pointing out. And now you have a little more flexibility to, to not have to be so perfect. Yeah. Um, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have those scenes done. That's not, yeah. a, not a bad thing. You should avoid it. But, uh, yeah, if you forget something or want to change a style or something like that, you're not uh, starting back over in SketchUp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, before we move on, there was some people in the chat talking about um, DWG or DXF uh, export and import. Um, <laughs> and I wonder if you can talk a little bit about maybe is there like a best practices or like I know there's the the CAD SketchUp uh, course on campus, but um, is there like a quick and dirty explanation of the best way to do that? Is it through layout or? No. Take it, Aaron. Okay. Take it. <laughs> uh, well, okay. that, that's tough because I, I mean, it really depends on what you need, what you're trying to get, what you want. Uh, it's I don't outputting a CAD file is not, never a one and done thing. It's not like there's a way to make any of that stuff. So it's it's hard. So uh, Tyson's not being like glib not wanting to talk about that it's just tough because you know, as soon as you start talking about interacting directly with another program you got to talk about how that other program deals with things and what content you want what data you want what information you know uh, and it can be tough and i have found that most people who are working with dxfs or dwgs are at some point working with a file that they didn't create and uh that can be a really tough one so um, I guess if there's specific questions anybody has, they could throw those questions out. We could do our best to address them. But uh, just the general, how do I best work with those files is rough because everybody does things a little different. Yeah. That's my take. I, I'm, with, I'm with you. And, and specifically in the context of layout and importing and exporting DWGs, um, again, uh, I'm plugging Campus today but that campus course on CAD deals with SketchUp. It doesn't deal with layout. So I don't have, yeah, like Aaron says, if you have very specific things, go ahead and ask, but otherwise um, you import, you use CAD as a reference. Um, that's kind of true in SketchUp too. That's gonna be true in layout, or you can just import it, leave it alone. But, um, one of the things that, and, and I, I let me just be fully honest, there are some drawing, a little bit of tools to kind of, uh, this 
layout is not a CAD drawing program, but we introduced some tools to at least facilitate some basic CAD uh, accuracy in drawing. And I am, that's, I, I have not, uh, I do not even want to attempt <laughs> that aspect of it because that's, uh, that's something I just haven't done almost at all. Uh, mm -hmm. But it can be done, but when you get to the details, then it kind of depends on your use case, basically. It does. Um, I, I don't think of layout as a replacement for CAD. Layout, uh, I, it, you can document and lay out full huge construction sets because you're doing it with the SketchUp model, but don't think of that layout is a CAD drawing replacement, uh, I would suggest. Mm -hmm. And real quick before we move on, Kunal in the chat mentioned that um, you can direct export out of layout to DXF or DWG and then import that into AutoCAD or whatever you're trying to do. So um, that's how he uses it and it works for him. So Awesome. Thank you. Anyways, yeah. <clears throat> uh, what do we got note, next? <laughs> one note here, I, I think in Eric's um, examples of this, he already has some tag groups established. Uh, they're super easy to do, and especially in this case because he's um, he's already created, if we look at all of our tags, he's gone through and broken the tags into different colors, which is another, um, it's not only really helpful just organizationally, it's really helpful in some of the way that you can work and isolate different pieces. So to, to create colors, you just click on a color and we could assign a different one if we wanted. But I'm gonna turn that back. That's not even correct. Now I'm gonna get in trouble. Oh, come on, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't I I don't know if the example files actually come with the groups. Or the folders so it's really easy to establish those I'm going to select a series of them they're all the same color these are all P which is uh, proposed I believe uh, and that means you can turn all of this off on and off so that was another thing that was introduced recently is a lot more you know this uh, ability to group tags so that that's nice too um, so with that in mind, let's let's keep going here. We've got different views that we uh, that we're you going to use, and then some elevations. I think the um, southwest, east are pretty typical nomenclatures for elevations. And then yep. just got some sections. And if we look at um, how the sections, if you're familiar with sections, you, you apply sections like on the outside of a group or on the inside of a group, and it's going to apply to whatever context it's in. So that's why these sections, if we turned our, let's see, if we turn more of the, the context on, so let's say the, the deck, the fence, the house, these sections are meant for cutting sort of the larger site plan as a whole, whereas these ones are embedded inside the group of the, the smaller garage structure. Yeah. So I think that's, that's got kind of an overview of how the model was set up. And in fairness, if you've never done never set up something like this and you're like wait a second how am i supposed to know what to set up you won't the first time get it perfect and you won't get it perfect the third time and that's okay because you can go back and forth and and you kind of learn you know what's your preference of how you like to break things apart into tags and and what uh what scenes to set up okay. well and i want to I just i just want to call out the importance of what you just did, Tyson. Um, a lot of people hop in and they're like, oh, I'm just going to create a layout file out of this. If you don't know what you're working with, it's 
it's just it's a request for a headache because uh, going into layout without understanding what you're working with in SketchUp is rough. So uh, doing that, having a way that you do your own review like that is super important. I've definitely run into that a couple of times. It's like send to layout. It's so easy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, once you do it a couple of times, then you're like, oh, OK. You know, do a little work up front. So yeah, it's easy, but it's a big, it's a big yeah, but it's possible. <laughs> also, somebody in the chat was saying, is this, are you Mac fans? And I do think uh, a lot of the team uses Mac. It's just like a preference thing, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, obviously a lot of people who use SketchUp and Layout use uh, PCs too. So try to balance it out. But uh, a lot of times the stuff we show is Mac just because we prefer it. You know, personal preference. I'll say that, I mean, based on watching, I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm going to start something. That's not my stream, Mr. Tyson. So... <laughs> Now, I think I've seen a lot of people who get better performance out of layout on PCs just because the ability to upgrade certain pieces like video cards and RAM and that sort of thing. So uh, kind of like rendering, you know, what's better for rendering, Mac or Windows? Well, whatever computer you have access to is the ideal one. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know anybody who makes a single decision based on a single program which computer to get. but. Uh, I have seen some people say that their performance on layout specifically is uh, a little better. It's a little more performant on their PC than what they get on their Macs. I think I've heard similar. And you know what? I'm, I'm glad you brought that up just as a general note, because we're going to go to layout now. And and let's just say from the, from the start, when you're doing lay, layout, it, it, it's going to go slow for you sometimes. It just is. And um, it's, a, it's a very regular discussion in our forums and in our community to say when, how, layout is awesome. It has so much potential, but my goodness, it's slow. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to try to, to like just defend that. But I, I will suggest that if you set stuff up um, in, in advance, for example, when I go to layout, um, Eric, being an illustrator, he's got this great eye for detail. He wants to create, you know, this is just a proposal. Did it need all of these um, this vegetation in it? Maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't have put in it, but it's it's it helps, you know, make it lovely. But I'm going to turn some of that off when I set some of the stuff up in layout because kind of like most of you know, you, you generally keep shadows off in SketchUp um, once your model starts getting large just because you don't want to have to deal with the processing power. And the same is going to be true of layout. I'm going to turn things off until I'm ready to sort of export out and then I could turn a few of them back on for the final nice piece. So there's just, there's things you can do to improve um, how it's going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Model smarter, not harder. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's really no different from things we would do for SketchUp is say, you know, there's things you're going to want to do to get the best performance out of the model. There's things like use components, use tags, use sections. If you have a big, heavy model, turn off your profiles, use fast styles. I mean, it's just, just basic things like that. And the same is true for layout where, uh, you know, you may end up wanting to have vector output when you're done, high resolution vector artwork. But while you're in layout, you know, use use this this quicker uh, quicker option. So mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Let let's let's actually drink our Kool-Aid right now because I'm a little bit worried that if I send this to layout right now and like I said, most of these scenes have uh, a lot of the tags turned on. So I'm going to grab, let's grab a, let's set tags over here and get our scenes. And I would rather turn this stuff on when I want it than, than not. Now, one thing I do want to do, let me break apart 
this, you know, what do we call this, a trellis of sorts, and the plant, um, I think, yeah, so I'm going to explode this group into two groups and, and just create some new tags because I want to turn these plants off but be able to at least leave the trellis on. So let's add a new... We've got those vines, and I'm going to go into any info and switch these vines over to vines. Make sure. Yep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 not that great, Matt. <laughs> it's, I thought you just amazing. got a nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nice is a step up from a shrug. Yeah, yeah. Do do you have a sound a sound profile that's like meh? Huh. <laughs> huh. There, there, okay, that's that's about that's about right. You did something. <laughs> um, let's see. Got that. And just, let's see, I'm going to take you, I'm going to take a few of these pieces in here. I guess these are already on the interior. Um, yeah, okay. So with that set up, um, let me turn my existing back on. A couple of these others back on, but uh, let's go to scenes, kind of grab basically everything, cover through the section, and I am going to update only, now that now you can get in trouble here, we've got all of our cameras, a bunch of stuff saved, I'm only going to update the visible tags. Nah, ah, I'm going to get in trouble here. I bet there's some tags saved on a few of these. Let's see, elevation. Let me... So something like, while you're digging into that, so, uh, a couple of tips have come up about SketchUp through the comments. Um, and I just, I just wanted to echo these because they're it's true. If you're going to go in and model, turning off things like shadows and fog uh, definitely speeds up SketchUp. And like I said, I will throw into that in styles. Turning off profiles is a, is a big one. Um, but if you model clean without that stuff on, I mean, a lot of that stuff is meant to be for presentation. So um, and profiles can help sometimes giving you uh, ideas about what's closed and what's not. But uh, the rest of that stuff is definitely presentation tool. So yeah, skipping it for the initial model is great idea. Yeah, it is. Um, so I, I hope this won't get us into too much trouble. Again, we'll be able to turn some of this back on in layout, but I turned off some of the heavy, the trees, the vegetation, some of the inside stuff. So I'm updating all of these scenes just for the visible tags, update, cross my fingers that, uh, that that's going to do what I hope it's going to do, and let's... We've been saying for a while we're going to go to layout. Let's actually do it. So let's do it. Save this. <laughs> and Save. Woo! <laughs> gotta gotta have it. Where'd that one come from? Is that? Is, are we supposed to know what that? I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not from anything. It's from SketchUp Live. That's what popularized it. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> I think because I had layout open, it didn't ask me what page size to use. It typically, if the, if it's if you're sending to layout and it don't have it open, it will typically ask you what page size to use. Um, in this case, I've got eleven by seventeen, 
and it, obviously the more typical page size might be eight and a half by eleven, at least here in the states. Um, what is it, A4 something um, across the globe? I don't know. That's that's metric paper. We don't use that. <laughs> A4 is a similar size to a letter, though. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it different. It's like a little bit shorter, so just slightly smaller. I think it's a little bit longer because the relationship. I recently learned this about a you know a one a zero a one a two a all the way down uh, paper is that it's the ratio of the sides is based on root two. So one of the sides is one length one and one of the sides is root two. It starts from a meter. That's what a zero is, and then so it's like you know Pythagoras right a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So um, it's it, like each version of it is just half of the previous bigger one so it just goes half 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 uh which i thought was pretty sweet and like clean and i'm like oh dang maybe i should start using a4 paper now well if you could get it here that would be one thing but uh... <laughs> yeah my printer's set up for it so That's maybe true. i just have to air mail you know <laughs> you are blowing my mind matt I know, I blew my mind when I first saw it, because I was like, oh, it makes a lot of sense. I guess that's the thing about metric, is that it just makes sense. <laughs> there's, there's some logic in there. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll model some A4 paper. Ooh. <laughs> well, I mean, so as, <laughs> ooh, as Material uh, consumers of things, we do have letter, which is five and a, or eight and a half inches by eleven. The next, well, then there's legal, which is like eight and a half by fourteen, I think. That's right. And then we jump to eleven by seventeen, which is two eight and a half by elevens. And then we go to a C size paper, which is like two foot by three foot. And then I don't know, stuff gets wacky. Yeah, it does. I agree. I agree. There's, there's the, the, the big, the big strength of metric in my mindset is the simplicity that you just, oh, just it's, it's simple, simple. I just don't know how big anything is. So I'm still, I mean, you tell me something's twenty millimeters. I'm like looking at my tape measure out the corner of my eye to see how big that is. So um, one of the things that's let's just start with again. Think of layout as a bit of a, a, an illustrator or a page you know, uh, in design. So we want to create some of the, the page, common page elements. And if I right click, object snap is typically turned on by default. I want a grid snap right now. And uh, let's just create, I've got, so, see this grid going here. This grid I can toggle on and off and the grid itself through document setup I can change the page size, change a lot of that stuff, and change the grid. So let's just say four divisions of every one inch. If I, not 44, if I uh, wanted to see these a little more heavily, I, yeah, we could. Let's see, the major grid. And you can see this actually going on right here in the minor grid. You make that a little darker. Um, but let's just set up. And this in my let's see, shape style, turn off fill, maybe make it. Point eight again, just sort of whatever, whatever your preference is, and then we'll draw, say, a line. And then let's add some text. And if we were to say, you know, page number, we want to have the page number on each of these pages. 
one of the things that is nice is that we can actually automate a few things in here. So if we say text, uh, insert auto text, right now I have this selected. So instead of page number, let's go, oh, do I need to uh, create a box first? And create a box, insert auto text, and I want this to be page number. And you see how it formats it. And if you, if I were to type this out, then that would also work. But I just, I forget what, what these are. And now this is two. I'm on that so. Which is curious because I'm on page oh, wow, three. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Does the cover page not count as one? Oh. Let's uh, let's find out. <clears throat> so the other thing I want to do with this is uh, to let's put it down here. And uh, let's say that we want this to appear on every page. Let's just make it a little bit larger. Let's make everything, let's say, quattrocento or something. So now I want this to appear on every page under layers I'm going to create a layer actually there is one here it says on every page if there's it's tiny over here but there's a little you know thing that that switches between one page and every page so if I say this let's just name this yeah we already have one but just for the sake of creating our own on every page and this I'm going to right click and say send to, oh no it's off the screen every page a good call roberto in the chat said uh that the page number says two because that little number sign next to it that's where it starts counting from oh maybe so you because could move I, that up or down i created the first one there so now probably if you go back it two, should say three yeah, oh, it's so nice having a uh, entire QC team watching over your shoulder as you model, huh? It really is. It's pretty fantastic. Can uh, <laughs> can we get you guys on tap? <laughs> <laughs> and where do we put? So this stuff, we'll put that on every page too. Let me move this down. Move it to. Uh, And then the only other thing let's do is let's make a copy of this. And I'm going to double click. And instead of page number, again, if I went to text, this one, let's say, is the page name. So now it says cover page, table of contents, inspiration. So now it'll just reflect whatever we put up here. So if I just add page four, page five, then five, you know, and we'll use these as we go. All right, all right. So cover page, let's set that up. We have our SketchUp model that we inserted in here. And let, I'm going to take and just make it something like this. So it fills my screen and then just to be sure, I'm going to go to my SketchUp model. To make sure this is what I'm seeing. Now, if I want this to be... No, actually, this is fine. Um, we'll remember that I went through and I updated a bunch of the scenes as far as the tags that are showing. And in this case, maybe I don't want this element over here. So I'm going to select this and 
in um, in my SketchUp model, I'm just going to go into the context and say, you know what, I want to turn, what is this, the deck? Yep, it was the deck. I'm going to turn that off. And in the existing, oh, that's the, that's not the, the right tree I want. This one. That went off. So, oh, wait. That's too small area. Which tree do I want? That one on, that one off. And then I'm going to take, and I can turn shadows, toggle shadows on too. So shadows. Awesome! <laughs> and let's turn the demo stuff off. Is there a... I think this door must have been part of what I, I turned off. Let's see here. There it is. Okay. Now, in um, in Eric's... Uh, let's see here. In his example, if you look... He has this great kind of illustrated look where he actually drew over the outline of this. And it really helps just sort of punch that, you know, that shape. It's a nice illustrative style. Um, I'm not going to go through doing all of that, but um, if we wanted to, uh, really he was just, so let me turn off the grid snap and I'll just toggle the grid off. He was just drawing over the top of this on a, on a new layer and just tracing over it. And I, what I, th you can see that there's like the shape is being filled. We can, uh, we can toggle that off. But I think if I turn off object snap, because this is just uh, an over the overlay, overlay outline something it doesn't have to be that exact and I it's it's almost easier to do this with that turned off and you can see mm -hmm. it just take you a few minutes to trace around this and then select it and say you know what let's punch that up to like three points or something Camilla so, did something similar in her presentation yesterday or uh, on Wednesday that was uh, sort of adding like a drop shadow kind of to like a full SketchUp model that um, yeah, it's a good option for different styles. Yeah. Uh, get the little layer on top. So nice. Well, this this is leveraging layout for what it does a good job of. Like you said, it's like uh, it's like Illustrator. Go ahead and add those illustrative properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> now I. <laughs> Um, let me save this file. Let's let's do that. Um, and uh, I want to show something just to show that you can do it. But then I'm going to quickly back away. Um, we we already talked about, and and if you view layout, you know this that. You know, layout can get slow as you start adding pages or, de or or bringing in a detailed SketchUp model. But another thing that can make layout slow is if I take my viewpoint, I can render it as a vector, raster, or hybrid view. Now, a vector is going to actually go through and trace all of the edges here you see in perfectly crisp vector, like an Illustrator file, line work it's beautiful it's super clean it's not super necessary and it is super intensive on your computer so if i turn vector on right now i'll just get a beach ball and it's going to take me 10 or 15 seconds just to render this and then every time i change it it's going to do that again so vector is nice for certain cases but generally you can you don't need it. Raster is still going to be really good. Hybrid is vector and raster because 
uh, vector, doesn't show shadows, it doesn't show uh, material textures, things like this. So hybrid will try and do both. I'm not gonna use these. Some people will use a combination of them. And that's what we're gonna do now just to get in trouble. So. <laughs> you gotta be careful. <laughs> Uh, I think there, there's probably a more appropriate sound uh, sound effect that's more like "Don't do it! Don't do it! Bail out!" <laughs> um, I don't have it. Next week I'll have it. <laughs> bail out! Bail out! Bail don't out! Don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> Close as I got. That's 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 appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take one of the existing styles. I'm gonna name it profiles and then we're gonna make a simple let's just say we we'll punch up the profiles to something like six. Uh, oh. we're gonna make them um, darker. Um, dashes don't need them. When you when you extend now I'm gonna use extensions. When you make really heavy profiles, it helps to have just a little bit of extension to close the corners. That's all I want. Um, and edges off. So I'm gonna refresh this one. Save my model with this new style. Nice save. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So far. It worked. Um <clears throat> all right. And I'm going to make a copy of this view. Now let me update the model reference, which shouldn't do anything yet. The only thing we did with the model is create a new style. But I need to update it so that I can go in. And this view, I want to turn shadows off. I also want to get rid of this tree first before I do this. So again, in this view, Let's say, um, where's, where's my tree here? Existing, nope, it's in context. Turn that off. Okay, with that set up, I'm gonna try to say, in model styles, hit profiles, and um, if, I choose vector, it should get rid of some of this transparency, I think. So, raster, here we go, vector. And it, it, it should also be pointed out that uh, really the big difference between these different layer types is refreshing and redrawing. Like if you're your model's just gonna sit there and you're done and you're messing with title blocks or whatever, that's fine, it's, it's not a big deal, but if you're making a lot of changes, bringing new models in, updating models, changing your viewports and it has to redraw, then that's where you wanna be conscious of raster versus vector. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so it, this is not where you would necessarily use this, but when people create drawings and they want really crisp yet yeah, let's say a plan you have a plan view they want really crisp line work on like the plan but then they'll use you know if they have shadows on or something else or some textures on they'll use that in raster so this is typically where you see this where you basically have viewport stacking and you have a simplified keyword simplified version that you turn vector for the line work and then you have a, a version underneath that's raster. Um, anyway, just as a an example, I, I, I think actually visually Eric's example looks better and um, I'll get rid of this, but I did want to show that it's just one of the possibilities out there is that you can stack viewports for different effects, even if you're not using the vector effect. So that's all, that thought. Nice. Um, if we send this one, this view to the back, then we actually get some of that outline. So, 
Maybe we'll leave it like that. And let's go back to where are we? So I'm going to take this, um, copy it, just Command C, Table of Contents, paste it in here, and let's start building out some of the other pieces of our dock. So let's go to Arrow View. And if I want, like I said, I could come into this model. If I wanted to adjust the view from here. Something like that, maybe. And then I'm going to select it and say preserve scale on resize so that I can grab this corner and move it out to grab here. And maybe this is where we say, okay, now we put come in and, and uh, we have right. That's the we get the idea. And that's just a nice graphical page. So then let's go to page three. Now this one, we don't need the SketchUp model. Don't need this. Uh, oh, well, okay, good. I'm glad I, I made a mistake here. If, um, when I went to Inspiration, I deleted that stuff, but you might have noticed that, so I'm undoing that this one had this red outline on it. And that's because I was not being careful. Every page was my active layer. I put this on every page, which meant that it is on every page. And when I deleted it from one page, I deleted it from the other one. So it's on the wrong page. Let's manage our layers a little bit. Should have done this already. So does the red outline show that it's on every page, or is the, are the layers colored by, like, is each layer a different color? Um, unless somebody knows differently, I think this red outline is just an indicator of on every page, and I don't know that you can change the colors for each layer. Do you, do you know differently, Aaron? You know... <laughs> Maybe in the like, chat. <laughs> that sounds like it's correct, but it's one of those things that I I don't I don't pay close enough attention to. Um, I, I as you're doing this though, um, I do want to do a shout out to templates in general, because um, man, if you have this stuff set up in a template, and then and granted, we're doing a training session, so we're starting from zero, and that's that's the way to do it. But if you have this kind of stuff set up in a template with your layers and your pages and your auto text uh, layout can actually, I don't want to say it sings, but man, you can really fly through creating some output if you have everything set up in a template. Mm -hmm. And where's Waldo in the chat did say, yes, red is for on every page. So just a little subtle indicator that uh, if you mess with this, you're messing with your whole document. Nice. I like consistency. <laughs> um, suddenly, while we were talking, I locked my every page so that I I I can mess with it. I can unlock it when I want to. But um, and every page, you can see that uh, I'm getting a mix of the SketchUp window on top. So I'm going to take every page and unlock it, move it to the top so that that stuff sits on top, lock it back down, and then let's see, where were we? Here we go. Um, <clears throat> that's a, a quick look because if you uh, want to bring images in, you absolutely can. In this case, 
Eric included in his exercise files a couple images that he thought were nice inspirational stuff of what he was trying to do. So I can just grab those and drag them straight into layout. And from here, I'm going to select all these, quick throw them onto the graphics layer. So quick check shows that that's Again, shouts to uh, Camilla's presentation, uh, Fireside Chat on Wednesday, that was all about creating mood boards in layout. So seeing the images like this reminded me because she always pulled in a lot of Pinterest images and uh, made them look pretty next to the SketchUp models to communicate her design intent uh, for the interior design. So nice. yeah, maybe I'll link that in the description as well because we seem to be talking be about great. it a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when I put these in here, uh, and, and we could do this one of a couple ways, I could um, put them in and then draw boxes around or, or draw boxes first. Let's let's draw some boxes. Um, initially, it looks like we've got a horizontal and a vertical, and a vertical and a horizontal. So I suspect that was by design. Good thinking, Eric. I'm going to right click, turn grid snap back on, and draw. see a sort of horizontal box a vertical one and then just this is interesting now one thing that I, I think is worth pointing out um, as Matt pointed out you we do have uh, similar to SketchUp snapping and that will work really well in some cases but sometimes it doesn't snap what you want to if you want to focus your snapping either to a grid or to an object this little center gizmo is the key to doing so so when I select any one of these this little gizmo shows up and I can grab this and move it around I can use that to rotate this object by that, so I can move it there, I can move it up here and rotate by that point, and I can also move it up here to the corner, and then when I move this, that is a nice focus point. So now I can snap to that corner that was giving me a little bit of trouble. Same thing here, I can say, okay, I'll move it up to a corner, and then move this and it's going to hit that grid point. Now, I'm going to copy that because I forgot to make a copy of it. Uh, undo, move it back, and then just paste. And the way paste works in layout is effectively paste in place in SketchUp. If you copy and paste something, it's going to paste in exactly the same place. And if you paste it to another page, because all your pages are the same, it's going to paste it exactly in place there. So that's nice to know. And it, it's and that's one that I always I always forget about. And I'm like, hey, that's nice. Yeah, it came back right where it should be. That's nice. I think paste in place should be how all default pastes work. Yeah, or paste like on your cursor, and then you can place it or something. Besides just randomly throwing it somewhere in the model, plopping it. Yeah, yeah. I'm basically that's it, Matt. I'm an anti-flopper. <laughs> I know we're going to get political on this show. I, I apologize. I don't like to make <laughs> my uh, personal political religious views known, but I think you should all know I'm anti plopper. All the ploppers <laughs> in the chat, be sure to uh, <laughs> voice your opinion if you want to. Whoa. Plopper Mama 707 says I can. Whoa. Hey, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you should have known. Um. When you're, oops, like most graphical programs, uh, if I just scale this, it will warp the image. Um, or I can hold a modifier key, shift to scale and keep the aspect ratio. And then, of course, there, and you can use other modifier keys, but just that's fairly common. I think it was only within the last version or two of Photoshop that they actually reversed that. 
and now you have to hold a modifier key to warp it and scale will constrain the aspect ratio and that to me feels like like sort of as you were just saying paste in place should be the default like how how is right. it taking that long for that to be the default well it's 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 software development right like <laughs> you set something up 50% of people like it the way it is 50% want it a different way and then you're just kind of in trouble so i mean yeah, everything that's normal except for the people who really like it the way it is. So that's tough. Yeah, I'm always skewing stuff in Photoshop by accident. Yeah. Like mixing it up and crunching it the wrong way. I'm like, gosh darn it. Now, the, the nice thing about images, uh, I'm sure this was shown earlier this week, um, is that you can draw any shape. If I take this image, no. and you can create a clipping mask out of any shape. So um, you can really draw some attention as you like. So if I take this oval and bring it here, I can select both the image and the shape, the oval shape, right click, create clipping mask. And then if you want, can double click on this and adjust this adjust my image so that it's yeah you know, centered or something and this is still a shape so I can go to the stroke of it change the color and make it six points so Camilla's favorite command clipping masks a you made a big uh, <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Also, I sh probably would be remiss if I didn't plug that she has a uh, a course too. It's in Portuguese, um, but it's like layout specifically for interior design. So you can check out her um, website for for that too if you're looking for that specific use. Nice. Yeah, let's definitely link to that too. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll throw that <clears throat> in the chat. Um. One thing that I'm trying to think about, I, I don't remember if I have an example of this. Um, do you know Aaron or Matt or even Nick? <laughs> um, I have found that the formatting of text in layout is really limited, so I tend to, if I want formatting, I will put it in, let's just say, doc or something put it the way I want and then copy it in. Is there better formatting in layout than I know of? Uh, yeah, it's it's that it's pretty basic. You have the the fonts window you can bring up. Um yeah. I think it's all done through there. So I mean it's kinda like there's basic tools for spreadsheets in there also. But it's definitely easier to go in and do spreadsheets in a spreadsheet program and input them for sure. Yeah. I mean, um, to each their own, of course. If if somebody does like using it, then that is cool. But uh, for me personally, I found that doing it in a separate program, bringing it in, seems to work a little better in my general work. Yeah. So if I copy, you know, some of my notes here, and then come in and draw some, draw a text box and paste, it's going to come in and it, it would be difficult to format it this way in layout. So if you use text a lot, um, you can actually link in uh, rich text files and, and certain formats and stuff. So if, if that's something you do, you may want to just you, uh, build some of your text outside of layout and then just copy or link it in. So let's see, where are we at? So now let's create, uh, so where's our model here? There we go, I'm gonna copy it, go to page four, paste it, and let's create uh, an aerial site plan.
Now, in my case, it, it it's not necessarily updating. And if that happens, uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, if I hit reset, then that usually will help me. But maybe not in this case. Let me make sure too that I didn't just Well, uh, maybe I turned something off. So let me check my yeah. existing and my contacts. Um, well, I don't know where it is. Funky. Oi. Right. Let's check our SketchUp model. What do we have for plan? So we have a plan, we have that. I'm not so much worried about what's turned on and off. I'm going to just update this. We should update the scene, including, where's my scenes? Got a couple suggestions from the chat too. Uh, once you're back in layout, please. Um, Johnny said he would just re like reinsert the model back into the page, but uh, Keggy said you could try zoom extents because it might have um, the viewport could have got mixed up with where the model is. Yeah, and that that definitely feels like that happens from time to time. Now, did I? Just crash the layout. I think I might have just. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been a while since we've done that on live, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where um, is Zoom Extends? I don't even know. View? <laughs> or. <laughs> There we go. Hmm. Oh, um, do you have to do it in the SketchUp model window? Is that an option in there? Well, somewhere in here. Hey. And if we go back to plan. All right. So yeah, somewhere in the link. <laughs> oh man. It does not feel <laughs> worth cheering for. <laughs> But now that we have this in here, we can see that um, just based on the generic scale, one of the great things about layout, and this, this I really do love, even just for my simple shop projects, is the ability to start putting this at scale. So right here it says current scale. That's always kind of a hint as to uh, a nearby scale, and we can create our own. Let's try quarter inch. That is a little bigger, so I think we need something like eighth inch. All right, that seems to be okay. Fit on our page, it does. Um, here's something, and uh, <laughs> this is this is going to be the let, let's just own up that this is kind of a unpleasant little aspect of layout. And I don't know that this is true on Windows, but I I, I know this is true on Mac. When I'm, I'm just trying to zoom out, and I can't zoom out farther than this, and I can't um, move move my just space side to side any bigger than this, 
A hack that you can do if you're on Mac or if Windows does this too is I'm going to take a circle. Um, I just want the stroke. I'm going to draw a huge circle. And move it over so it's something like this. So it's bigger than I can even see right now. And I'm going to Command X to cut it. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to zoom extents. Um, and the extents of that circle gives me a wider area. Um, and I could do this a few more times, but for now at least, um, if I leave this circle here, I think that it gives me more of that flexibility. Now, now that should just work. <laughs> yeah. So it's I get caught up in that every time I use layout. I'm like, because I have the same thing as you. I have the toolbars over on the side, so I'm like, I want it like off center, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this circle workaround is a good, good call. Yeah. It's worth That's knowing nice. about. <clears throat> Um, let's, uh, let's sort of move this over. We don't need, and I will just bring this back to. And then in here, um, I believe in, uh, in his course, Eric kind of does this thing where he sets up all of his pages generally first and then he comes back and adds a lot of the graphics afterwards, uh, which is a great way to work. Or you could just do them as you go. I'm going to do a few of these as we go. So let's say we want to emphasize this piece. So let's see, this is on the model. This. Yeah, you know, so I'm just just drawing a little more attention to this, uh, and then I believe something like this, where he's. I, this may not be the outline of the house, but we're going to pretend that it is. And you know, so just bringing some attention there, and then I I think uh, another thing you do is sort of say, and then there's the property outline. So this edge, ah, what's happening? Have you ever had that, Matt, Aaron? Like, I will have Hang stuff. On. Um, where just like it doesn't register my keyboard and my keyboard being wireless sometimes I just think the battery's up but then actually it's not and uh, and I have to actually select another tool hmm. it's hmm. a funny that sounds like a you problem <laughs> <laughs> no I, I have not uh, had issues like that with the keyboard to be totally honest Oh, you know what? And it, nobody's asked, but I, 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 as much as I love using my tablet, generally, um, I can't use it. That'll lay out cool. No. One person did mention it right at the top of the show, but uh, we were deep in conversation, so I didn't bring it up. But uh, yeah. yeah, people are always looking out for the tablet. <clears throat> When you're the, at the helm. Well, the, thank you, everybody. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> the, the thing with the tablet that is, is most problematic is that there's two navigation modes in layout because you're navigating the page and you're navigating sometimes within a SketchUp model. You can't map all of that stuff the way that you can just map zoom orbit and pan in SketchUp. And so mm -hmm. I just find it's too much trouble. More trouble than it's worth. More All right, so I, trouble. I, I got a question for uh, everybody listening, because I'm curious about this. I myself, uh, you know, I really enjoy 
creating 3D models. And there are occasions where I need to turn those 3D models into 2D drawings. But I'm definitely going to say I, uh, I prefer to do the 3D part over the 2D part. So I, that's my question is like, are there people out there who are like, oh man, no, creating those, the 2D drawings is the, like the, the fun part. Um, I'm just curious, like where does everybody fall as far as what I like doing, what I have to do kind of thing, you know, where you at? I mean, cause there's people out there who like spreadsheets and, and I don't get that, but it's cool. I respect it. Yeah, spreadsheets a little too far, but uh, I I like working in two D, especially in layout. Actually, um, like you know, not everybody has the modeling skills that you do, <laughs> and like the hours you put in. Uh, so like sometimes I just get frustrated when I'm actually trying to model something. I mean, a lot of times when I'm using SketchUp, it's like existing models or you know three D warehouse stuff or something. Um, but I, I, I mean, uh, just last night I was using layout for uh, some like stuff that I had to make for my wedding because it's just, especially, honestly, not to just keep plugging this, but after watching Camille's thing on Wednesday, I was like, oh, wow, that is way easier than like y- using InDesign. I always struggle with InDesign. Like I'm not, I just don't know how to use it. I know there's like, it's like a professional tool and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that makes it easy. But I uh, just doing like, you know, relatively simple stuff layout was super easy for doing everything so uh yeah and i like i said sometimes just get caught up in the actual you know geometry stuff so that's 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 exactly what i'm what i'm wondering is like uh is that a thing um not to i i want (laughs) to be curious to go down the conversation i before i move on because i you're right, Aaron. Like um, you, you mentioned ago, like that seems like a you problem. I cannot select and delete this stuff, and the reason is because my cursor seems to be stuck down here. No matter what I pick, if I hit delete, it's deleting down here. And I only point that out. Hopefully, nobody else has that problem. But I point that out just to be like, if you see that, go ahead and let us know in the forums and stuff, because I'd be curious. If this is kind of um, you know a wider issue that would be worth you know get, sure, getting to yeah. our dev team, it could just be my own hardware. But if other people are seeing it, let us know because it's yeah. weird the way that this is absolutely just seems stuck on this. In fact, I might have to restart layout. And the forum is the best place to report a bug like this. Is that right? Yeah. Ah, uh, sure. Cool. So. I know I've had some of those issues with the cursor on different programs, so I don't know if it's exactly, I normally just restart, but it might be a bug um, just in multiple programs, I'm not sure. Same thing happened to me in After Effects yesterday, actually. I've never had that in layout, but um, other programs for sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that there's a lot of love for 3D in the chat, going back to the 3D versus 2D. Some people uh, said, you know, essentially, I feel like it's a heavily 3D audience, but 2D is a, <laughs> sort of a necessary uh, thing for some communication um, tools or whatever. You know. Well, you know, not, not, to, not to belabor the point, but I know, uh, you know, we read about it a lot in the forums, and, and that's just, this is not just a SketchUp thing by any means. But uh, the idea of, you know, still still relying heavily on 2D output to convey design requirements and that sort of thing, um, I, I think a lot of people are like, oh, man, won't it be easier when, you know, we just hand a tablet to the person who needs something or we send them a file and they, they look at it in VR or whatever, and as opposed to having, you know, use all this paper or whatever. Um, I think that's awesome. I really, I think that is the way of the future, but I think that's far away in the future. I, I don't have to be pessimistic, but uh, I just think we're so used to, in so many places, used to looking at those two, that 2D output that, yeah, it is a, a thing we have to do still. Someday. Yeah. 
Yeah. Although 2D is kind of fun, especially, you know, painting stuff up on your wall or having like a physical, you know, printout. Unless it's just a PDF, then it's like, eh, it's no fun. <laughs> PDF. <laughs> oh. A measly old PDF. I do think uh, there's a really, like, once you've created something, say, in layout, and you've documented it, because when you're 3D modeling, it's a lot more fun for me to be in the moment. But when you step away from your screen, but you still have put together kind of this nice set of, of sheets that you can sort through, and you just put it together in a way that just, it looks nice, it's really communicative, It there, there's something very satisfying about that. So even though in real time 3D oh, for sure. is more enjoyable, I think the output of this is still pretty fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It is nice to have a full, like to finish a full plan set. And, you know, just to be able to look at it and go, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Done. Wait, hold on. <sighs> that was a sound effect. That wasn't me. <laughs> Is that, is that you recorded? Were you the, uh, the the sound? Did you commission yourself to make that sound of it? I can do an impression of it. Okay. <sighs> it's from this larger one. Uh. Are, are you getting into <laughs> Asmir now, or however it's pronounced, whatever the... ASMR? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's 20 minutes of Matt swallowing coffee. Uh -huh. I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> honestly the mic i have is like the same mic that a lot of those people use so i'm like what was maybe it? i should get into that game start a patreon and uh just a little side hustle over here just drink stuff and let people listen to you yeah well, well that's called mukbang isn't it when you eat like on camera oh that's, that's so like weird. a little bit different I'm into the subgenres, you know. You know, you got to have the delineation between I, ASMR oh. mukbang. Yeah, mm, yeah, the crossover. Oh, you can come up with the ASMR mukbang. Um, <laughs> I, 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 okay. I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna bear my soul a little bit, guys. But uh, I did this last week. I was, uh, I was looking up something. I don't know what I was. Well, it's like that YouTube hole you fall down and eventually you're like wait what the hell was i doing again five minutes <laughs> 20 minutes ago um but i i found this thing where somebody had gone to like a japanese market and bought like 15 food items and took okay. them home unwrapped them and ate them and and i sat and watched that video for 20 <laughs> minutes and i got done i'm like what just happened like but it was it was fascinating to just I mean, he wasn't eating it on, on camera. He was like, it was his point of view, like unwrapping. There's a loud crinkling of the plastic and then mm -hmm. pouring in hot water if it was a noodle thing or, or, you know, like breaking it in half and looking at it. But I was like, just mouth agape, just staring at this video, this guy just unwrapping food and then eating it off camera. And I'm like, how did I, how did I watch a 20 minute video of that? But yeah, there's a market for it. Apparently people like me. <laughs> yeah. It's at, probably got 20 million of, views. 11 30 at night yeah it's, it's it's good stuff yeah you get sucked in you know it's scary it's sort of interesting and yeah tactile walking through the market and everything oh man you have to send me that link actually i'll link it in the description <laughs> so anybody who wants to watch it <laughs> oh, my. um a lot of people in the chat talking about their kind of 2d parts of their workflows. Uh, interesting to read over here, you know, what softwares and what uh, use cases um, people are using it for. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt if you were going to say something, Tyson. I wasn't going to say anything useful. We already asked about 2D versus 3D, and I was just going to suggest that people in the chat can talk about how much they either enjoy or absolutely hate ASMR. Because the idea of listening to somebody to eat is nails on chalkboard 
<laughs> the idea that that's ASMR to anybody is so bizarre to me, at least, and it's just crazy. Also, it's just a, a note. Cut it out! <laughs> I hate it so much. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, I get, I, I get both sides. I mean, there's, there's some things where I'm like, like I said, like crackling of rappers, like a sound that makes you feel something or triggers some sort of memory or something. I get that. But the, yeah, there's those, some of them where I'm like, are you really holding a camera up to your face while you hit yourself in the cheek with a hairbrush? Why is that enjoyable to anybody? Why? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. They'll teach their own, you know? I don't know in if that's right really a thing or not, them. but I was just thinking of something a person could do to their own body that would make a sound. <laughs> just like... Ooh, look at that. Did, you, did you hit record? <laughs> this is money here. <laughs> you're, just is, throwing, uh... you're just throwing money on the ground right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. I think there's a Holy. lot of things that are happening out there that uh, people enjoy, and I don't necessarily. I try not to judge, or you know, I try to fully respect everybody who wants to do what they want to do and that's cool but yeah some people are idiots <laughs> some things are easier to make fun of than others for sure <laughs> um somebody in the chat asked about uh if we're going to be getting to printing is there something in that course about uh well like sending to actual prints or will you be talking about that today tyson well i i i can talk about that just a little bit but before I do, please uh, specify anything more because if you're talking about more than just going, you know, file export as a PDF or file print, uh, you can. But please, <laughs> please talk about like anything more specific, uh, unless unless you want to know, you know, if I if we can send it to uh, CMYK, multi-process coloring. So I, uh, no, don't ask that. I, don't know. I guess that's the question: is is what is there a kind of output that's not as simple as print for you? I think typically, what people will do is you will export it as a PDF, and then if you want to print, you print from there. But then you've got kind of both options. Um, one of the nice comparisons, actually, that Eric goes through again in this idea of uh, vector versus raster is that he goes through and says, you know, once we export this out, how much difference does it make? And he zooms into his PDF, but again, this PDF is only a, a letter size, so it's not that, you know, that big. It's not a, a full doc size. But essentially, it's like it just does not make enough difference. So when you export, Let's uh, let's let's test this out here. So my model PDF. Um, I have the options to do a, a medium, low, or high resolution. Let's just test the medium and high resolution um, JPEG compression. Get a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> so here's our PDF and the thing that I think is worth noting on this is that um, here's the page we're on currently and when the, we export this out in a PDF let's uh, zoom in here you know yeah, we're getting a good. We can export this out as even a higher res. And again, if you wanted super crisp lines, you could turn vector on, and you would get um, even more so than what we're getting here. Uh, but at a, at a performance cost. So anyway, that's. I, I don't know if that addresses the question. Um, but we have to zoom in quite a lot to kind of start to to see some difference and. And this was medium, so we could go higher and, and get even better output. 
But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so depending on the size, it might just leave it as raster and you're good to go. But uh, I always like having the perfectly clean lines, you know, so I like to go in for the vector. But that's another that's another potential potential potential, potential uh, performance thing there, too, right? Because you have the ability to choose um, to work in whatever that was, I forget, uh, Raster? high, medium, low. Oh, right. Are you talking for the export quality or for like the display quality? For Because there's display and output? Sorry. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. Um, sorry, yeah. Uh, and where's that at? It's in preferences, I think, preferences, or it? document setup, either one of those. Yeah, one of those. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, what are, it's a doc setup, maybe. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I just did this last night. <laughs> I should know. <laughs> yes. There it is. There you go. Yeah. Rendering resolution. So our output, we can turn it up. Display, we can turn it up. Or we could turn it down actually if we're starting to choke a little bit. So, so yeah, because that's that's another spot that uh, you know, people want to know how to get the most out of their performance, and that's that's one of them is show low but output high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, words to live by. Yeah. Show low, output high. T-shirt. <laughs> that's that's how I roll right there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I'm getting caught between this this issue I was seeing earlier. I, it is does not want to accept the scale I'm trying to get at here. I want all of these. You saw me choose a different one, right? <laughs> I don't want to get between you and layout. Um, that's you guys work it out. Just let us know when <laughs> when when we're good to move on. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um, so what do we got here? What do we got here? So we've got this. We've got we'll call this. Um, and the nice thing about you know some of the stuff that you can set up in layout is is just building in the efficiency of let's say all right we have the uh, elevations for existing we're just going to duplicate this page so now we've got this one existing and proposed and then we're just going to go through and turn our tags uh, on and off so this one this is the proposed I believe so we want to come in and turn off anything that's demo which should be that car and some other stuff and then under proposed on the garage door this is the back so um, and then the same thing the other way I think there was a few pieces if we go back to existing and select these then we uh, want to turn off all of the proposed and make sure so now existing proposed just by setting stuff up uh, nicely in SketchUp, and now we've, we've uh, built in some efficiency there. So, uh, let's do the same thing. And see if we can throw in a few sections.
uh, Mike in the chat was talking about uh, some troubles he had with layout printing to a particular um, document sizes and stuff. Um, and then I was going to mention the form, but then Keggy actually mentioned the form right after. But, um, you know, it's a thing you could go to the forum for, too, for whether it's the bug, you know, report section or um, other workarounds and stuff. People are are always uh, eager to help over there. So, Yeah, good call. Um, and Keggy was also asking about um, future of layout or ideas at what it could be or whether it's going to be replaced by something else potentially or something. He also says he knows we can't talk about it because it's, you know, future for publicly traded company and stuff. But um, what can we say? <laughs> yep. Yep. Do you like Lego? I feel like we can say oh. that we we read the forums a lot. We listen a lot. Now, we can't move at the speed of, obviously, what people... But we know, uh, we've been mentioning, right? We know performance is an issue. That's always something on our mind that we're, we want to improve. We, we know um, stuff like that. Uh, what were you going to say, Aaron? I was say nobody here is in development, so... Uh, you know, none of us actually actively work on it, but um, I can say that uh, I have seen in the time that I've been there, uh, definitely building up the resources for working on a layout as opposed to, you know, where it was when I first started. There's a lot more people working on it, a lot more organized around getting changes made. So I, I have high hopes. Mm hmm. For sure. And also Eric's in the chat. Shouts to Eric for uh, for watching. He's the one who made the training course on campus. Um, Did he miss that part at the beginning where Tyson was cursing his name just a little bit? <laughs> I don't know. He can watch the uh, recording on YouTube after to I, I mean, repeat a little that bit over is and over. conservative, right? I was giving him a hit. Laying earful. into him was how the term, yeah, it would be said, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but he does. He did mention um, make sure to reset the style override to show section cuts uh, because section visibility and layouts tied to style and not the scene. So you could have a scene with and without the section cut uh, showing. Wow, backseat driver, man, just showing up and telling you what to do. <laughs> Bossy. <laughs> um. Um, actually, so let's, uh, let's just make sure we know what, what we're talking about here. Are you suggesting Eric that we have this, that we reset here, the viewport and I know the real time feedback is, uh, is not so fast, but that, that would be interesting. I, I'd be curious to understand better, you know, what. I, I'm not sure when it is appropriate to reset and, and you know, ah, see, I reset, got rid of my, the things that I turned off, so, I mean, mm. give it a bit of demo, give it a bit of top context, turn on the, uh, One thing, I, I, Eric mentioned this too, is this is a case, it, it's just good to know, the section tool in SketchUp uh, wants to detect that you have sort of a, a solid object, a closed series of faces. And this is a case where the model, uh, for whatever reason, didn't. Now we could go back to SketchUp and fix it, and you might want to because it would fix it in multiple views. But sometimes if you have just a simple view, you also may just say, you know what, I'm going to come in to uh, layout and I'll put this on the graphics. I'm just going to draw and fill it, sample the same gray. 
you know so again there's there's things that maybe it's worth going back to SketchUp and fixing and then there's some things that like if it's just a quick fix and you're out the out the door do it in layout you know i i just recently hit that exactly where uh, had a drawing and a piece needed to be removed so i could have gone back in the SketchUp created a whole new scene replace the material the piece i had with the cut piece and then i would have had to go change all my scenes and like it would have been painful but i just basically masked it with <laughs> the background color and just covered over it and that's uh yeah that's a, a huge huge time saver to be able to do that getting the job done oh and that's an important point to use the grouping tool and make sure that that mask is grouped with the model because otherwise you come in and move it later and then you have this floating invisible blob and like it's like it's messy yeah so, it can be confusing uh, like this yeah. there you go <laughs> <laughs> they can group that together yeah so grouping that... is grouping is a cool tool that uh i never think i don't think you know i do it all the time in sketchup but for whatever reason another spot in layout that i like i don't use grouping enough but it is a huge help as you're making changes it really is um okay so eric's version is so much prettier than mine i knew that was gonna be the case from the start oh well um <laughs> well hey it, eric eric did it in more than an hour and 40 minutes uh with a couple of trained monkeys yelling at you. So, not, not putting down Eric's work, Eric, you're absolutely right. It is great, but uh, don't cut yourself short. <laughs> um, so, that to say, I guess, um, well, let, and let's just throw out there, because we're coming up on two hours, which for me is typically when I start being conscious of, you know, that's, that's a good, good amount mm -hmm. of time. And I think we've covered quite a lot of kind of the process and, and you can see that in layout, a lot of the process is repetitive. Like once you set up some views, you're copying those views and making some adjustments, copying those views, choosing a new scene, making some adjustments, but it's one model file typically, not always, but typically one model file that you just have set up in multiple ways and you're presenting it in through, through different viewports. So there's a lot of repetitive work um, that just you sort well, of work through. And I want, I, want to, I want to throw this out there because I try to mention as often as possible because some people don't realize that the relationship between a SketchUp model and layout model is not necessarily one-to-one -one either. You can have multiple SketchUp files create viewports inside of a single layout file. It doesn't have to just be one file. Um, some people are surprised by that, so I just wanted to mention that just because it, it is one of the powers of layout, right? You could have a final file linked to a dozen different SketchUp files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call out. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> I will mention here, I, um, I think I would butcher this. Eric has kind of this interesting um, lesson on how he does the area takeoffs. And part of that entails that Again, this is the same SketchUp file that we have. Where's our? Um, but if we look at area, he's just taken a couple of the surfaces, copied them up, put them on, you know, grouped them and put them in their own tag, and then taken area, you know, measurements off those. And then he actually mentions that uh, he tested two different plugins which do area takeoffs, and uh, for a few reasons, he, he used Fredo's because it gave him more control over just taking area off of uh, this group set or this this tag set. Um, and then put that out as a spreadsheet and just brought that spreadsheet in and styled it. So, And because that spreadsheet is, again, linked in, you can update that uh, as you make changes and you, it, you can actually get the update in layout. So. Uh, another plug for going and checking out the course directly is uh, this kind of final sheet that I, I won't go into, but it, it was, it's kind of a really interesting final page here. 
Um, a couple other things that, again, just to sort of tempt people, go check out the course. It's it's takes less time than you spent here with us, and you'll get more information. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for hanging out. But I will say that the course does, and not to put anything down, it's awesome. I agree, Tyson. Go check it out. There are fewer sound effects, just so you know. Just <laughs> heads up, being honest, open. <laughs> That's thank you. a thank valid you point. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, and, yeah, go, go ahead. I was I, just going to say, somebody in the chat was asking about the. Uh, the file is the file available for sharing, and I think you get the finished document set with the uh, on the the campus course, but there's no layout file. Like you create the layout file as you follow it along. Is that right? Oh no, no, no. Let's uh, let's open the layout file. Oh, there is. Okay. Tyson will give you everything he can. I will, but in this case, Eric will too. Let's give him credit because he he's. Completely and just chimed in too. One. Actually, I just noticed Eric said, "Yeah, all the working files are in the exercise files for the course." And yeah, that link is in the description, as Eric pointed out as well. So, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, uh, if you need to update, you because the SketchUp file is in there, the layout file is in there, and if it's going to want you to update, you may do that. Um, but so yeah, we can look right here at we've got the the lovely you know what we were talking about line work contents it's all put together so yeah definitely go check it out if you want to just look at it reverse engineer it get any inspiration it's all in here But, pretty yeah <laughs> um but try and put a few of these pages together like that's that's really what we hope people will do with um with these files and with campus um eric uh, doesn't walk you through creating everything he'll show you one or two pages how he puts it together and then sort of jump ahead to being like okay now here's a, a fast forward version of putting together the next two pages and then, mm -hmm. you know, so he shows you everything he does and then sort of fast forward through dragging you through all of it. But that's a great thing because it gives you all the information um, so you can do it yourself. So, yeah, here it is. Sketch a file, layout file. They're both in here. Go check them out. Um, yes! Oh. That's awesome! <laughs> it's awesome oh, to end on good. Eric's file. <laughs> we didn't Sweet. get into annotations or dimension strings or bringing in some of the graphical elements. Uh, but again, I'll just say it's all covered and even better. So I think, uh, what do you think? We can wrap. We're about two hours. I think we can Sounds call good. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Tyson. Thanks for uh, learning us all up. That was super cool. I think we should clap for that. Yay! Clap, <laughs> clap. <laughs> oh, the kids liked it, too. Thanks, They're kids. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, so uh, thank you guys all for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us. Just a quick reminder, do swing by on this Wednesday onto our uh, Crowdcast page. If you don't already get notifications, you can check out 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com and you can find a link directly to our Crowdcast page there. But come join us in uh, our uh, fireside chat and talk to JJ Zanetta. It's going to be great. Do check out uh, Sketchup Campus. So. If you want more about layout, like you said, check this course out. Um, if you don't know about campus, just head there and we'll see you next week. It's a, it's a wealth of learning. You can just hang out there for hours and get smarted up. Um, but otherwise, we will see you all next week right back here. 
uh, stay safe, stay sane, and uh, have a great week. Absolutely. Yeah. Take it easy, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later.